Hey, what's up? Good morning and welcome to uh, what is this? Episode eight here on Comlands, the uh, parallel 200 horsepower challenge uh, introduced uh, by our fellow YouTuber Crustu and now uh, now being enjoyed by I think at last count, there's like 12, 12, um, 12 channels all participating in this challenge. If you look way off in the distance there, you can see our oat field. Uh, looking all ready to harvest. Uh, so we're actually just up here at the store. Got a couple things sitting here for us. So I thought we'd start up here this morning and we would uh, grab something here and on the way back we could chat. Uh, so we picked this thing up. Not very expensive. Uh, it, it was relatively inexpensive. Let's just say that. And uh, this is the, the the biggest addition is right here. This custom color cloth. I believe it was a Dominator, 180 odd horsepower, a a suitable header from what I can tell. I'm no expert, I don't know, but um, that's what uh, what the salesperson suggested. Go with this header. All right, so we are going to. Oh, I don't think I can tow that, can I? I can't tow that trailer, can I, with this? That'd be pretty sweet if I could. That doesn't look right. Nope, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Oh my god. Okay, that was it was almost over before it started, folks. <laughs> Alright, we'll close the door here this morning. It's minus two right now, so we'll get the heat on in here. And we'll uh we'll head back down to the farm. I got the four-way flashers on. Should probably put my beacons on also. Uh, you know what? We're we're not even gonna tempt fate. We're just gonna cut across the grass here a little bit, on our way over to the uh, on our way over to the road. Let's all uh, admire the beauty that is the Colossus Dominator here. I think it's about a uh, six thousand liter capacity, uh, so by no means a large uh, hold on this. But you know what? When you're dealing with the two hundred horsepower cap uh, there's only so much you can do I guess when it comes to a uh, harvester so this is what we've gone with I think it's a uh, beaut I love the uh, I love the detail like that reminds me of like old office building the ce the ceiling there I believe um, yes we have one the first set light setting is exterior and rear the second light setting turns on your in cabin uh, lights which is kind of funny you don't see that very often Anyways, we'll turn those off because we don't need them. We'll just keep the exterior lights on for safety. I'm all over the place in this thing. Oh, now you can start to see all the fields, actually. So there is the uh, canola field off in the distance there. You can see that's the yellow block. You can see the oat field. That's the brown, uh, the browner texture, the lighter brown. Then you can see the... Uh, well, right next to the oat field to the left should be the wheat field. I don't know what that dark brown uh shoot you know what let's just cut down here i was gonna take the road but i don't think the guy that owns this property is probably not looking right now i think he's in florida yeah march he's probably not back from florida yet anyways yeah so uh, a few changes around the farm that we're gonna see obviously this being one of them uh i was busy uh, so last time we saw each other Let's see, we had put the cows in, we had uh, put the put the greenhouse, the greenhouse that caused me so much confusion, uh, the tree nursery greenhouse, which uh, looked super cool, but I'm not exactly sure what the potential there is. Um, we're gonna go, when we get down to the farm, we're gonna go, I think I know where we can go and check to see uh, how much we're actually uh, making um, from it. So we're gonna go and check that out in a minute or 10 here, whatever long it takes us to get down here. We're generating a bunch of si oh yeah okay so we're in March now yeah so I got as much silage sold as I could obviously uh, I've purchased this uh, this harvester I purchased the trailer I purchased the header uh, you'll see when we get up here there's a couple new greenhouses uh, I did manage to get the fence in for the for the cows oh there's another new piece of equipment down there. there's a couple pieces of equipment actually I'll show you when we get down there that's a uh, pretty exciting stuff. So we have our uh, patriotic salute to the uh, to the motherland there.
Okay, so we've added a couple of smaller uh, greenhouses here. We have canola and sunflowers uh, growing in this one. We have oat, wheat, and sorghum growing in this one. My plan is to try to find some kind of... I want to start making some bread uh, because I did discover exactly how lucrative bread is. Uh, it's ridiculous, actually, is what it is. So I put the fence in here. I put a relatively mit mismatched gate. I mean, it seems to work well here, but it's not the... I don't think it's necessarily the gate that goes with uh, this fence, but that's okay. These guys have been producing milk for us. So we're at 1,230 liters of milk. I can't help but think that when we get a proper feed mix in there, though, we're going to see that milk uh, production really uh, jump. So, okay, in regards to this, <laughs> this, uh, which has been a, a bit of a mystery for me. Um, currently, we have one liter of bamboo in here, it looks like. So if I go into our finances. Sold products is my guess. I think this is where we see the um, the roots of our labor or whatever you want to say from here. So we're at it's not 730 in the morning. Somebody told me that it, that's the products sell every hour. Uh, so that was uh, seven hundred and seventy eight dollars. I think that actually went up, didn't it? So we're at seven seventy eight right now. Let's see if we can remember to check at the end of the day and what that number shows. And then we'll maybe be able to determine if uh, if indeed this is selling throughout the day. I have no doubt that whomever told me that is right. I just want to figure out where I can see it. So over here, this field was ready to mow. So I did mow that this morning and uh, and and put it into rows because I figured maybe we didn't want to sit through uh, through me mowing. But you uh, we will get to sit through me uh, picking the Picking the grass up, uh, you can see I've got the forge wagon attached to the tractor already over there. Um, we're going to right away before we do anything, we're going to grab that forge wagon and head up to the store and uh, go pick up that other trailer. And I'll show you why. You may have already noticed parked over there in the uh, hay. What was that? Is that the, that's this the straw. Straw loft? No, what do we call it? <laughs> the hay loft or whatever? So this was recommended by many people, um, this forge wagon here. Uh, so I've opted, it was a, a turbo pack, I guess, so, so there's a number of um, of crone uh, forge wagons in there. Uh, so this one, I can't remember the capacity, I think it's like 28,000 liters, uh, and it was about $4,500. Uh, so I've opted for this one here, but that means we're going to sell the other one uh, and then so that's why we're going to take it up to the store we're going to sell it and then we're going to bring back the grain trailer that uh, we're going to need when we go to harvest those oats which are ready they're ripe and ready for us um over here uh i was just checking these are both empty right so here we have two silos uh i'm not i don't really like um i don't like the multi-fruit silos where you can dump like 10 different kinds of grain into them and then it you know it sorts them and then you can take out whatever you want. Um, I like uh, I kind of like this this whole style where you need the auger and then uh, you can put it into these bins. So that's what we're going to do here. So one of these and, and we'll potentially add more. Oops, we've missed. We'll potentially add more as we go. But um, I kind of saw this section of grass here as maybe a good uh, opportunity to put in a bank of uh, silos. These are ready to go. About, they're about 130,000 liters, 125,000 liters uh, per silo. I have a feeling we may need some bigger ones, to be honest with you. But uh, for now, we'll run with these. Um, so these are these are also kind of cool because you got to come around the back. You've got to. I think that opened it. Well, let's go look. Yes, now you can. You you know, could potentially see down in there. But you can't. But anyways, you get the idea. So that that cap is open now, and we can put uh, we can put uh, product in it. I wonder. It, so in the real world, how would you open that? Is it electronic? Like it seems weird that. Oh shoot! I just fell off the silo. It seems odd that you would have an electronic function like that. And I'm wondering if maybe instead there was see the the piece that sticks up there. I'm wondering if there's some function of whether you can somehow pull that down with a rope or I don't, I don't know. How's that work in real life? Anyway, so those are in here. So the silos are new. The auger uh, is new. The 
uh, harvester that we got here is new. You've seen the two new greenhouses and the fence for uh, with the beautiful gate for the cows. So I think, oh, one more thing here. Thank you, Gaming Joy. So, so I no longer have to complain about using the same windrow every time. I uh, received a mod here. The first time anybody's ever sent me a mod, which is kind of cool. Uh, so thanks for that, sir. Uh, but this is a customizable color on the uh, on this uh, windrow here. Um, so I went with like a sort of a stainless steel uh, body and uh, army green painted whatever these are, spinning wheels of death. Uh, so that is our custom uh, custom windrow of which I used this morning when I was uh, in the fields here putting all this into rows. So let's pop over here and get the tractor. We'll go get the uh, we'll get this sold and we'll go pick up the uh, other grain trailer up at the store and then we can get the harvesting. This is actually uh, I think this is actually going to be the first time I've harvested a field in any series on this channel. <laughs> I mean, I'm, so this is the uh, third third series that I'm. Well, OK, wait, wait, that's not true. No, because if you went back, uh, there are two series that never went anywhere. One on St. Cal, uh, which was like a year ago and pretty cringy. I think there's like two episodes on there. I just I never take anything down, so I just left them up there. But um, and I did harvest fields there. And then also on Hoff Bergman, I think I got two episodes there or maybe three. And uh, and I believe I harvested not my own. Well, I didn't own my own fields, actually, in that I was an egg farmer. Or I am, I guess, an egg farmer. I don't have my own field. Uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the map, but there's a compound that has like three chicken coops in it. So I bought that basically. And that's my whole world right there. And I've been doing contracts. So so yes, I did harvest on there, but I was harvesting other people's fields for contracts. So, but I, I guess I, I almost don't count the St. Cal one. I definitely don't necessarily count as my uh, concerted effort to make content for for YouTube. Oh, anyways, I didn't carry through. I didn't follow through with what I had started there. But uh, but again, I didn't I didn't take them down since my rebirth. I guess I uh, and and this effort to make videos. That's what this is. Do I go this way? I can't remember. Yes, I do. Yeah, so anyways, I have not harvested in this in sort of new chapter, I guess we'll call it. Uh, so I'm pretty excited. These oats are going to be uh, a, uh, a moment in time for me. These oats mean more than just oats. So then the question is, what do we do with them? Um, so I believe, well, so first of all, I am 99.9% .9 sure that I do get straw off the oats. Uh, I did say in the last episode, but I wasn't sure whether you get straw or not. And now I've uh, seen straw with my own eyes come from harvesting oats. So that's whoa, easy now. That's good. Uh, so we'll be able to pick up the straw and put it into our uh, our straw building there. Straw building, whatever straw loft. I don't know, whatever we're calling it. But then I'm going to have oats and I don't know what to do with the oats. It's not the right time to sell them. So my thinking is that I'll just put them immediately into the into one of those silos and then we'll uh, be able to figure out what we're going to do with them later. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do with the oats. Can I, I? I don't know. I think I can make oat flour, like if I wanted to get uh, a flour mill. But yeah, I don't know. So uh, on that note, uh, I, I I don't want to get into 100 different productions. I kind of want to keep things simple. I, and I did say that I didn't want to buy any property and I've been buying property. So who knows? Eventually, maybe we'll get to a bunch of productions. But for right now, I'm thinking I don't really want to get into a bunch. So what do I do with those oats? I thought I was going to uh, use some of the Omatana small uh, capacity um, sheds and, and such. I'm not even going to repair this. I'm, should I just sell it? No, that's OK. Let's go repair it. We'll go see what it costs to repair and paint. I know we get the money out of it, so I don't feel it's not a waste of money. 655, right? So that would be uh, $3,066. So if I paint this and we get more than $3,066, then the theories are true. Yeah, so instead of 3066 I got like another $70. <laughs> big money, big money, y'all. It's amazing how they can repaint it, but then it's still dirty. Don't they wash it before they repaint it? 
Anyways, anybody have an opinion on the Omatana small building or the Omatana? Um, oh, I probably could have sold this back there, couldn't I? The Omatana uh, like farm production buildings, that kind of stuff. Anybody have an opinion on that stuff? I've never used it, but uh, I mean, I did have one person kind of jump up and say, hey, maybe think twice about using that. The reason why I'm still asking, though, is because it's just such a good size, like footprint. So, yeah, I'd be curious to know if anybody's had good luck with them or or has some kind of experience they want to share. All right. So the one trick with that harvester is getting a trailer that is low enough to be able to get it under the uh, the pipe. This is a trailer that fits. I tested it. Um, I want to say this is the. I want to say this one has like 22,000 liters capacity, but I know it doesn't. Uh, maybe we're somewhere in the teens, I think, with this trailer. So definitely not a huge trailer, but it definitely fits underneath the arm of the uh, of the harvester, which is important. Otherwise, it's, you can't dump the grain into the uh, into the trailer. The classic Stroutman. At time of recording this, it is uh, Saturday evening in, in sometime in the middle of February. So I'm actually pretty current right now. This is probably my most current video in a while because this thing will probably post uh, recorded on the Saturday. It'd be posting on the Monday. Monday? No, the Tuesday. Yeah, because I think we're posting. Valley Springs on the Monday. So I think this should post on the Tuesday. So very, very current. So the so like responding to comments, for example, like uh, a lot of comments recently on what to do with the land across the across the river, because uh, we have a little section of 22 that's on the other side, if you recall. Uh, so some some uh, people calling to uh, uh, make a field over there, which would be kind of cool uh, or to put the animals over there, I guess, was was one suggestion which is which definitely uh would make sense uh but i do oh uh, you know what let's put the trailer over there let's go put this over here because so, we're gonna start to harvest uh sorry uh so my, my hope is that i can keep the majority of the farming on this side of the river uh i mean i ended up having to buy a chunk of land on the other side only because the property that i wanted which is 22 uh spanned the river um but i, I don't know that i'll specifically go out looking for property on the other side of the river there's actually so much on this side of the river uh that i can i can see myself owning so you know expanding on this side of the river before i do anything on the other side of the river makes sense to me uh so i can't see myself investing in a ton of anything other than maybe just mowing the grass across there i, I don't know we'll see but i keep those suggestions coming i i uh yeah it's it's funny i actually and and I feel guilty sometimes because I know there's some there's stuff that people suggest and it makes total sense when we're chatting. But then give me two hours and I completely forget about what <laughs> unless I went back and, you know, before every episode looked at every single comment that's come through, you know, and then and then made a list of the stuff that I need to implement or look at based on uh, based on comments. But it's a uh, kind of a challenge. So. I think what we're going to do in, in regards to harvesting is I'm going to uh, do probably two headlands uh, on the field over there. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to hire a worker for the first time. As much as I'd like to enjoy our harvest over there, I think I can enjoy two headlands. And then uh, after that, uh, have no issue handing it over to a worker. Um, we can then take the tractor and go pick up the, uh, the new forge wagon. The unfolding anim animations on this are, are uh, not the most stellar. Like, what was that? Open the flap. Oh, I I just stabbed a sunflower. All right, folks, and we are harvesting. Uh, so we'll run two passes here, and then we'll head up the side behind me there, and then we'll go across the top and then back down the other side. And uh, and uh, we'll do that a couple times, and that should pretty much cover us for what we need. So I noticed uh, that the 
um, the loft there where we're going to be storing our straw has a capacity of 250,000 liters, which typically I'd say, wow, that's fantastic. But based on all of the grass we've been getting, um, like there's been an abundance of of, uh, of stuff. So 250,000 liters of straw, I just have this funny feeling like, are we going to take 250,000 liters of straw off this field alone, I wonder? Then we have the... Uh, so then we can probably pull straw off the hay field and probably the canola field also, maybe? I'm trying to remember what the ruling was on canola. If you, uh, canola, I think, yes, you do get the, the straw. It's sort of a black field texture, isn't it? So not a not a huge selection. I think who did I hear say was it Crustu talking about uh, what another twenty horsepower would have done? Like imagine this was the two hundred and twenty five horsepower challenge. Uh, the options would be increased greatly, not, not just in harvesters but in everything really. <laughs> but actually, twenty five, even ten, even if you did. 210 horsepower challenge all of a sudden the options for equipment are just huge all right now the test i've been wondering about this uh, as we take this harvester up these hills we've got kind of like the saddle design here with hills on either side It's, a, it's quite a steep hill. It's like climbing a wall. Oh shoot. I have to remember to pick up that straw out of the grass. time estimating what we'll get off this field for crops actually hold on doesn't that tell you when you wheel over here no that's how you die you turn around and run straight first into the header <laughs> which is basically what just happened there it feels kind of funny uh, you know I just say we never get to harvest anything on this channel and this is an exciting moment and everything else and it's like all right let's get harvesting and hire a worker <laughs> put all that time and uh anticipation into uh, the first harvest and then i go and hire a worker i don't know if oats are much of a uh much of a yielder this field and the wheat field are probably we'll look at the map but they're probably similar size and i'd be curious to see how much we take off this versus how much we take off that i feel like i should do another headline across the top here just so the worker has a good place to turn around because we are on a bit of a funky hill here i don't want them to try to compensate for the hill and maybe not get all of the green I know the... Oh no, it's full. Oh, shoot. What was I thinking? Let's do it this way. Oh my gosh. Uh, all my nice new stuff. This is why we can't have nice stuff. <laughs> Look at the combine. It's already sliding back down the hill. All right, let's try this again. Just a matter of paying attention, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. It's just obliterating the crops. I 
could use these uh, oats over on Bally Springs. Is that not uh, a good source of uh, food for your pigs? As we work towards getting 2,000 pigs over there on Bally Springs. All right, while our friend there is harvesting, we are going to leave. I'll leave the trailer down here at the bottom. Actually, what are we? We're 54% full already. So you know what we'll do? We'll take the trailer with us. Let's jam this into the silo and then uh, we'll go start picking up grass, I guess, until we're notified that uh, that we need to get back there. But yeah, so it does feel weird to hire a worker. Um, I mean, I'm essentially paying somebody to do something that I could be doing. Oh, look at that. Right? There's nothing saying that I couldn't be over there uh, harvesting, but that does that looks weird. But we're going to be multitasking now, so we want to make the best use of our time. Yeah, uh, my guess. So these oats, obviously, oats are quick to quick turnaround because I think we planted. Well, no, I guess we planted the wheat last, but uh, the oats were definitely planted after the sunflowers and after the canola, uh, and and are ready to harvest. So, I mean, if if oats are worth some money, maybe we should be planting. We should always have a, a field of oats going, so that way we always have that uh, potential cash injection coming there. Uh. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna freestyle it with the with the accelerator button here we could probably set the cruise control to what 10 that's okay we'll just we'll just do this I ain't gonna be pretty but <laughs> oh, come on I mean, if we can get straw off the field plus we can get a decent uh, return on the oats then be pretty good and I, I i think i've also uh maybe decided and i might have mentioned this already maybe i didn't but i think i've decided that uh once we get to one in-game year i'm gonna sort of pick probably july as the fixed visual month and then we're just gonna leave it there so i don't have to deal with the snow in february perhaps uh just for fun we may make it snow in february using um using like the uh i think i can use easy dev and and uh, and put snow on the ground, you know, f for fun, <laughs> fun. Uh, but well, we'll we'll make that decision. I, I think I'd rather be the controller of the weather than have uh, Mother Nature control it. Perfect. This is where it'd be nice to have a, another tractor because you can kind of toggle back and forth. But we managed to go this far. Oh, we're in year two. What year two? Oh, so what is that? Is that calendar? Oops, I don't want to take this with me. Is that calendar year two? Is that what it is? I guess so. Yeah, because we started in March, right? Sorry, no, no, no. no. Normally I start in... I, okay, that's why I'm confused. Usually I, I use the starting start in spring mod. So you always start in March. Uh, we started this in, in August. So we've basically gone... Uh, we, we, we haven't gone a full year. That screwed me up. Yeah, we're so uh, it does say year two, probably because it's uh, just the calendar year. So we'll keep running uh, as is until we get to until we get to like the fall, August, and then we'll we'll flip. Uh, well, you know what we'll do is we'll, we'll once we get to July, we'll just make it July all the time. Oh, no. Another issue I've been having. This thing's been breaking down. I keep forgetting to fix it. It broke down a couple times on me recently. Good thing we have this custom shop over here. Yeah, look at that. When you get to about a half life, then it just starts breaking down on you. Everything else is good. Uh, I don't think that would affect... No, I don't think that would affect anything, because... You know how they say, like, uh, you know, for example, if the combine is like a harvester, if it's if it's not serviced properly or the header or whatever, that uh, it'll affect your yield. I don't think that's the same when you're towing something, is it? Like, would I have mowed less grass because uh, I needed to service the tractor? The uh, the amount of 
drag here on this uh, this forge wagon. You know what? While we're here, let's get this grass. It's been bugging me. The amount of drag on this forge wagon when you're pulling it across the uh, like when when the the pickup is down, uh, it's not making me feel very good for those hills. So so many good uh, so many good series right now, and and the hard part is I wish I could watch all the episodes from everybody, but I just don't know how you do that. <laughs> if you have twelve. YouTube channels. Well, I guess I'd be including my own and and uh, not everybody's been posting this whole time. Some people are just jo joining in now. Um, but if 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 you have, you know, let's say so if I'm one of them, let's say you have 11 uh, YouTube channels that are posting, you know, what seem like on average about an hour long episodes. Two and sometimes three, if not more times per week, I'd have to watch full time uh, in order to keep up. <laughs> So I'm doing my best to sort of pick and pick here and there, but it's not been easy when I'm working. Or, for example, uh, like if this was going to be a time lapse or I was just going to skip to the end of this, uh, the pickup here, I would probably just cut my mic and then I would still record. But I'd be watching somebody's watching somebody's episode on on YouTube. But uh, yeah, not uh, not easy to keep up with. So we want to kind of keep track of how much grass we're going to take off here, I guess, uh, because the thinking is that we're going to get a better yield because we planted and fertilized this grass versus the map grass that we'd initially taken off. And I think in roughly the space that we've plowed here, I think we took about, would it be crazy to think that we took 200, oh, look at this thing rock, oh my god. Would it be crazy to think that we took 200,000 liters off of here? 96. Okay, I think we're going to put a bunch into the hayloft here because we are the grass dryer because we've, we've got 96,000 liters of hay. We have fed some hay to the cows already. And then when you go over to the uh, silage here. You know, there's roughly 200,000 liters in there already, so. Let's uh, let's put this into the. So let's just say we've got roughly 100,000 liters of hay in here when we started. So maybe we'll put like 100,000. I don't know. Maybe we'll put like 50,000. I have no idea. It's, it's hard to not want to make all of it silage because it's worth so much money. But maybe what we do is we make sure we get ourselves to about 200,000 liters of hay. And then, or at least like grass and hay combination. And then after that, we focus on dumping everything into the silage. This thing does not empty quickly by any means. Where's the, what's the turbo part? Turbo 3200. Hope you got something to do while you're sitting there waiting for it to empty. Oh, look, I got to go back already and, and uh, empty the grain tank for that uh, worker D. This thing, so there's only, I mean, it's not like it's a massive, we had 13,000 liters in the previous uh, forge wagon. This one's 22,000 liters. So I'm definitely thankful for the additional capacity, but uh, man, it takes three times as long just to empty it. I think I was, I was talking about the production building. So there was one person that made a comment on one of the episodes that uh, it might've been episode like six where they had said to uh, maybe stay away from, like I mentioned, stay away from the Omatana uh, production building, I guess, like this, the, the one I was talking about in the episode, um, because the um, something to do with the levels or something is off on it. Uh, so does anybody else aware of that or have any experience or have any recommendations? Um, I will refrain from putting in any kind of a production like a grain mill or anything like that until maybe this episode posts and then if somebody has a suggestion they could provide that would be uh, appreciated um, I don't want to spend a lot of money I don't want it to take up a long a large footprint uh, some of the stuff's very expensive I'm not a big fan of the windmills but if I had to put a windmill in because that was the best uh, the best option then I guess we could do that oh shoot I just saw the worker put yeah I was hoping they'd get a little further so I could uh I could follow along as they went up the hill, but not the case. All right, worker D, let me uh, 
borrow this for a second. They were doing such a good job, they're gonna think that I fired them, but that's not what, what happened. So I think I've been blessed with many a slow emptying. <laughs> like this, thing, look how slow this thing is. Uh, you'd think that I had 30,000 liters in there based on the amount of time it takes to empty this harvester. Wow. Maybe there's a mod for that. Is there a quick emptying mod? By any chance? <laughs> Alright, we'll get our worker friend back on it. I guess I'm emptying each time. Look, 50, 54%. So, yeah, it's a, it's a 12,000 liter trailer. But you can see what I mean. Like, the clearance above the trailer, like, the clearance between the trailer and the and the arm there are, are not, uh, are not very big. So, I couldn't really go with uh, with anything else. The, anything realistic, because there are some unrealistic. Like I could go with a sort of a shallow trailer, but I could have a hundred thousand liters capacity, and that probably wouldn't be the right thing to do. Careful not to bump the auger. So then you gotta basically hop in it, reposition it. Like right now, it is lined up perfectly. Man, we're cruising along nicely here. Uh, I feel like I'm paying a small fortune to the worker anyways, but uh, it's something I could have probably done myself. But anyways, uh, when we wanna get more stuff done, that's the cost of uh, doing business, I guess, right? So the so a couple things. One, uh, this combine and its loading speed when it comes to loading into the tractor is quite slow. Hope he just stops at the end here. Stop, buddy. I don't want to have to keep keep up with you. Yeah, okay, so quite slow for him to unload 6,500 liters of uh, grain into the trailer. Uh, the trailer itself unloads okay. Uh, it's not not doesn't take too long for it to unload. It's uh, 6,500 liters. That I take out of the uh, out of the combine, uh, so I'm okay with the trailer. I do find the the harvester a little bit slow to to unload, so we may want to at some point be conscious of that and and think about a change. The uh, forge wagon is ridiculous. Uh, I swear it's so I can drive at a max 11 kilometers an hour, and I want to go back and look to see what what I was able to do with the other the other forge wagon. Uh, because I swear it, it did not feel that slow. Uh, this one, this one goes super slow, uh, and then the emptying takes forever. So, I mean, what I'm picking up with extra capacity is holds 22,000 liters. I think I'm losing in working speed and in uh, and in the speed to to empty. We're gonna stick with it right now, but uh, it might be one of those things that as soon as I got a couple bucks and an opportunity, I might be switching it out for. Uh, I, I put another one in into my mod list uh now i'm using it on uh excuse me i'm using it on valley springs uh so you know do i really want to use it on two maps at the same time but you know what who cares i, I don't know that i can suffer through this uh I, I don't know where the turbo comes from to be honest with you i mean it, it's called a turbo forge harvester but then it, there's nothing turbo about it. it should be more like turd elbow all right, let's disconnect this. Let's go pick up the turd elbow. I believe this is going to be the fifth load into the grass dryer, but we're going to verify that here in a second. I mean, I like the way it looks and, and uh, you know, I like the additional capacity and stuff. We collect a little bit more, so we're 100%. Okay, we're at 50%. And we'll go and while this is empty, we'll go to the production menu and see what we've got. Uh, grass dryer. Yeah, so this would take us to about roughly the 100,000 liters that we were going to put in before we start moving over to silage. So, but now in saying that, we got a considerable amount of grass still to pick up. So we may maybe put another 50,000 liters into this. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to go to waste. We're going to be feeding the cows. So this is going to prove to be a bit of a long day, maybe. I wonder if I get if I make the swap. Well, as soon as the harvester's done, we'll make a decision on this uh, forge wagon because 
I don't really want to uh, suffer through this entire day slash month slash episode uh, with a, a forge wagon that's slow as molasses. Yeah, look at this. We have a working speed of 11 kilometers per hour, and I swear we went faster with the other one. I watch the front of the forge wagon. Oh yeah, look, it's like articulated. But does that mean I can go faster? No, it doesn't matter. All right, well, for realism's sake, I'll keep it on the ground. But I'm I'm the same working speed whether the front end is elevated and just sucking the grass off the ground apparently, or or if I'm uh, like dug deep into the ground, I go the same speed. That's all good. Uh, I'm gonna put this last one into the grass dryer, and then we're just gonna dump all the rest into silage. We want to make sure that we have that. Uh, I mean, if, you're, if so far that's been driving all of our purchases uh, is the si si silage sales. We've been buying all of our property basically from silage. Now, once we get that uh, good feed mix in there, we should have silage and milk, right? Those two things combined should account for a fair amount of income for us. As the beautiful Canadian flag flies in the distance, let's go check on the harvester. Alright, we've taken over. This thing's dirty. Yeah, definitely, uh, well, it's, it's fun to harvest the crops. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've never really used uh, an amazing uh, harvester. <laughs> I, I don't find it to be the most exciting thing. I don't know why. It does feel quite satisfying, though, knowing that, uh, you know, we put in all the work to cut a field and prep it and plant it and then eventually get to harvest it. I mean, that's kind of satisfying. We'll go dump this into the uh, into the silo there, and then we'll have an idea of what uh, how much we pulled off that field. I wasn't really keeping track. Uh, I mean, obviously, if we had taken ten loads, we'd have about sixty-five thousand liters of uh, grain. But I know that it wasn't ten loads. All right, I will leave that to that. Let's go do a couple passes here and then we'll check on the uh, check on the silo there and see what's in it. All right, before I start unloading oats, I'm going to move move the harvester because I can just see this being a disaster otherwise. Shut the lights off. All right, so we got that put away. Good job there, Harvester. Let's go over here. We got this hooked up, so let's see what the final tally is here. I didn't see how much was in there. I guess we'll just wait a second. Right. 35,800 liters off that field. I don't know what to think. Uh, all I know is I have another trailer to park here and it can't be backed up. Let's go put it beside the harvester. Oh, actually, you know what? I do have a I do have space here. I think we can park it in here. Um 
Yes, because after I'm just going to be picking up straw. I don't have any more grain. Like, there's not. We're not harvesting anything in the next probably month or so. Next one up, I think, is sunflowers, which means we're going to need a new header. Lots of room. Let me check something, because this is this is a. Uh, I'm suffering hard here with this thing. Yeah, look, so <laughs> look at the working speed. So that was the one we had originally with 13,000 liters of capacity, and it has a working speed of 20 kilometers per hour. 10 kilometers per hour. These are slow. So it's funny how they're called turbo, though. <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. 20 kilometers per hour, $28,000. Oh, man, I, I just can't live with this. this is gonna, it, it takes way too long to empty, and it takes way lo too long to pick anything up. It's just going to kill me. So we're going to get $3,700 for that. Add that to the roughly 22, 25. Eh, okay, so we go over here. That's my math. I just mumble through it. Uh, okay, so likely what we could do is we could take a load of silage up to the shop, sell the silage, sell the trailer, purchase this, and then get the work done. Because if we got to pick up straw and we got to pick up grass, and grass is going to be a big part of our lives here on the map, no doubt, uh, that... Uh, forge wagon is going to destroy me so what currently is the price for silage and where all right anywhere up there marginally better than uh what we have here at the sell everything container so we might as well uh put our tractor to the test and see if it can haul this a uh, load of silage up to the store yeah, it's, I, I don't think it's a matter of like, I don't think it's a matter of the oh, 689. Okay, I don't think it's a matter of the tractor not being able to tow the trailer. It's definitely the working speed while picking up grass. Just insane. Man, and this thing, this thing is just rocking all over the place, too. All right, needless to say, nothing interesting happened on the drive up here. It was pretty uneventful. All right, we are there. So that is 15. Oh, now we're getting bonuses. Nice. Almost uh, 16,000 and change for that load. Now let's go sell this turd. Let's just sell it. There you go. We're momentarily rich. What would be the odds of something popped in the used when we need it? Nope. Honey bee header. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's all we need. Uh, these are amazing. Um, but we got to get to the point where we have large uh, vehicles, which will, we won't necessarily have in this uh, playthrough. So I don't think we'll be using those ever. Uh, okay, forge wagon. Ooh. Fancy. $29,750. Look, we were rich momentarily. Now we have 12000 $300, but we should have a much more civilized experience now when it comes to picking up the grass and the straw. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just took the roof off that thing with my forks. That's not safe. All right, I can't wait to see how this compares. <laughs> this is, my guess is this is going to be night and day to what uh, what we had with the last uh, forge wagon. Oh my god, look at this. 20, so twice the speed. This is way better. Oh my god, what a difference. Let's just hope uh, we can get up a hill. But already, who cares? This, we're going 20 kilometers an hour. We're going 21. We're going an additional 10 kilometers an hour faster than we were in the previous one. And then, so we've got to compare once we get to the emptying side, how fast this empties compared to the other one. As much as I want to use that turbo one, I really like the way it looked and everything. And I kind of wanted to use this one on Valley Springs and the other one on, on this map. I'm just not going to do it if, if this thing's working like this. I hope I didn't get the same color on Valley Springs. I tend to do the same thing all the time. 
Uh, maybe I did. I'm trying to remember now. But anyways, on Bally Springs, it wasn't my uh, decision. It was a an estate sale, so some other farmer decided what color he wanted his forge wagon before he kicked the bucket. All right, so things did slow down at the end there, but I think it's only because of the amount that we're towing here is my guess. Oh yeah, that's way faster. Way faster. I was starting to think with the other forge wagon that I should probably just get myself a good book. Okay, this this forge wagon is a welcome addition to our farm here. All right, just picking up the last couple scraps here. Grass dryer had 96,000. Now we're 220, let's call it 225,000. So we added like 120,000 liters, I guess. How much did we have in here before? So, oh, and I did, I did sell 17. I sold 22,000 liters. 34 to 84 and I think what did we have like 176 so but I mean it's got to be about a hundred thousand liters I think for sure I think we pulled like 200,000 liters off this grass field so that's good news I wonder um, so there was a comment in on one episode I think it was when I got when I made that field uh, John was saying that a using a shallow cultivator to create a field versus using a plow could reduce your yield potential. Um, so if that's actually the case, then I'm, I'm kind of wondering if I should maybe, you know, do a couple laps around the outside of that field with the plow and then hire a worker to go in and plow it all up, like use the actual the chisel plow and then um, and then replant it. I wonder if that makes sense. If it's going to get me more grass, maybe that effort is worth it. Are we keeping this? We're putting this into the the straw house, <laughs> the straw house, the whatever. Where we're, once we put this into the building, where we, where we will be storing the straw, then uh, we should go. Well, we don't really have any money right now, but uh, it would be n nice to get a feed mixer. Oh, so here actually. As I'm talking about feed mixers, so so far we've gone with no bales, right? Uh, which which is different for me. What do you think of a? There's a couple buildings that are uh, like feed mix buildings. What if we continued along the lines of uh, you know using a building to do what we would normally do with a trailer and get one of these feed mix buildings? Is that of any interest? I thought that might be an interesting idea rather than going with the traditional trailer. There's, there's one in particular that actually it's like there's like two of them, but they're just slightly different style. I think one's brick, one's stucco. But uh, and I think it's like fifteen thousand dollars. I want to say it's fifteen thousand dollars and it's a like a static building, a production building or whatever. The only thing is, I think the capacity is like 40,000 liters or something. So it's not very uh, big that way, but maybe that's bigger than a like a trailer. There we go, folks. Just had a moment. That is the right building, right? Yes. We're just cruising along here. This, uh, I'd say this forge wagon uh trailer combo is a bit of a beast combo here it's working well for us oh took a short straw that time we're getting close to i can't remember i was gonna say we're <laughs> I was gonna say we're getting close to 200,000 liters of straw in the uh in the hayloft there but honestly i don't recall i know that the capacity is 250 i don't think we'll get to 250,000 off of here but uh, we definitely are going to have a lot of straw <laughs> Which then uh, sort of begs the question, what do we do with our straw? Once that's full, what do we do with our straw? Well, we could uh, make silage out of it because we do have the ability to ferment straw in our fermenting silo there. 
So we could make some beautiful straw silage. Uh, there are productions that we can, uh, there's a straw, f straw hat factory or whatever. We could corner the market on straw hats if we wanted. Um, we may look at that actually, uh, because we can make a fortune selling straw products. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're really gonna have to think of what to do there because it's not gonna take long into, well, okay. So first of all, straw is just a small part of the uh, TMR mix. So I have a feeling we may fill this and and never go through 250,000 liters of straw, uh, for all I know. Let's just do this. Okay, while it's doing that, let's look at something. Straw and water into lime. That's kind of interesting. That's only 20 grand. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really not pumped on the whole idea of a windmill. Um, I don't know. I just don't like the looks of them. Evil windmill. Uh, but anyways, here is one of the mixing TMR mixing station. Other than the fact that we can only uh, the capacity is only 46,000 liters, which is quite. I don't know. Is that small? It doesn't seem like much. Do we go this route instead of a trailer? The grass is dry. The farmer is. The grass is dry. The farmer is hay. Satisfied. All right. You put straw and water in and you get into clothing accessories or crates. So $70,000. All right, there's the straw accessories. I think that's the hats. And straw crates. So that's not bad money by any means. I don't know, something to consider, right? Like, I don't want to... I mean, we could stick with silage, but it, it'd be nice to kind of diversify a little bit. I did mention I don't want to get into tons of different... Like, I don't want a whole street full of productions because then it just becomes, I don't know, like from for the more my own sanity, it just becomes annoying. <laughs> the amount of stuff you have to keep track of, it just would drive me crazy. Uh, I would feel like I'm constantly juggling. Now, I've also never done that, so maybe in the end I'll realize there's a, a you know, a way of playing that I've, I've never experienced and that I actually enjoy it, but I don't know. Anyways, I think once we get this straw off the field, we will likely be. I think like I think the only choice we have is to wrap for the day after that. I mean, we harvested a field. We got the tour. We harvested a field. We've collected grass and straw. The total recording time for this is about two hours. I don't exactly know what's happened in those last two hours, so I'm going to have to see when I go back and check the check the footage because I uh, I literally got interrupted so many times. We'll be 200,000 liters in here. And the capacity is only 250. <laughs> I may I may between episodes make a couple decisions. Like I think so looking at um, what would be up next for harvest. I don't think maybe 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 the sunflowers in the next episode, but I don't think so. If that's the case, though, I'd like to have the ability to make uh, oil. Like I'd like I'd like um, whatever the grain mill or whatever it is that that'll allow me to make a few things, including oil production. We'll see. I may I may uh, I don't know. I, the funny thing is you you can go a million different directions in this in this map. I'm I'm like half thinking okay maybe we. You know, somehow we drum up the 70 grand or whatever and we buy the straw productions and then maybe we throw in one of Omatana's farm. How, how bad can it be? It can't be that bad, can it? The farm productions, um, you know, maybe we throw one of those in and then and then once the harvest on those two fields is done, we rip all the trees out of there. And then even if we don't have uh, a production set up or a sawmill yet, we, uh, you know, we pile up the trees and then as soon as we can afford a sawmill, we throw the, that in and... I guess that's maybe the only way to really make money separate of of uh, constantly harvesting your crops, right? I know one thing's for sure, though. The next time we have to mow a huge piece of property that we buy and then pick up all the grass, 
This thing's gonna make life so much easier. I mean, it's all still time consuming because you gotta go up and down the rows and pick everything up, but my gosh, this thing is just so much better. All right, and that's it for the straw. So this straw is going to go into the hayloft there where we'll now have like 200,000 liters of straw waiting to be turned into EMR. Ooh. Okay, let's check the, um, well, let's here, let's just see what the last number is here. Wow, we're like 25,000 liters short of a, uh, of a full hayloft. <laughs> That's so crazy, well, we're 20. 19,000 liters short of a full hayloft. Man, these uh, these fields giveth. That is a mess. That forge wagon is an absolute mess. I don't want to promise that by the next episode we're going to have a, a way to clean things, but I kind of feel like I, I should. Okay, let me check this. All right, sold products, 778. So that is by no means changing as we go here. I don't know what to make of uh, of the these trees that are supposed to be selling. I don't know what that's all about. Let's see what a day's worth of milk production looks like. Not so much, eh? Uh, anyways, okay, well, you know what? On that note, I think we're going to call that uh, March. Uh, you know, we didn't buy any new land. We did definitely up our equipment. Uh, yes, we definitely did that and uh, a substantial upgrade in buildings, I would say, with uh, silos and uh, greenhouses and augers and stuff. So, I mean, all in all, the farm definitely evolved uh, in the month of March. Is it possible that we'll be into a harvest in the month of April? I wonder. Well, it does look like there's rain in the forecast, so hopefully not. Great demand at sell everything container. Great demand for what? But uh, I think on that note, we're going to leave that there and uh, let's see what happens in the next one. All right. Thanks so much. See you later.